We've made billions through controlling them and they didn't even notice. I remember how it all began, like it was yesterday. Alright guys, I figured out a way to make us all a lot richer. Please don't tell me it's not another pyramid scheme. No, no, this time it's actually going to work. And we better not get caught with this. That's the best part. If we work together, they'll never be able to figure this out. Alright then, this is your last chance. I'm in. Let's begin operation. Rand manipulation. Now this topic has caused many questions to arise. First of all, what on earth is Rand manipulation? What is collusion? Have 28 banks been stealing 1 trillion Rand a day from South Africa? Have they been colluding to affect South Africa's economy? How has this affected South Africa's economy? And finally, what on earth is the solution to prevent this from ever happening again? Let me give you an example. Have you ever gone to a festival or an event or even a theme park like Gold Reef City and gone to a stall to buy a can of Coke? And on the can of Coke, you literally see a recommended retail price of 9 Rand, but the can has been sold for 22 Rand at every single stall. Well, that's kind of a form of collusion, where this is happening in South Africa with these banks at a much larger scale, where these banks are working together to make themselves a lot more money and causing the value of the Rand to be affected. So how did these 28 banks collude to manipulate the rand okay let's simplify this let's just say you're going on a trip to america and you want to exchange a thousand rand for let's just say fifty dollars these 28 banks instead of letting the exchange rate do its whole supply and demand thing and give you what your money's worth they decided to inflate all of the service fees related to exchanging your currency now they did this all together so no matter which bank you choose you're technically working with inflated service prices now this is beneficial to every single bank involved in this where now they will all be competing with each other but at much higher profit margins. Now this so-called teamwork and inflating service prices kind of affected the cost of exchanging currencies and in turn messed with the value of the rand compared to the dollar. These guys were living out their own American hustle because they had secret agreements and were using like private chat rooms on platforms like Bloomberg and Reuters to communicate about these so-called colluded agreements. Okay so let's break this down one more time so you exactly understand what I mean when I say these banks colluded together. So let's Let's just say we have 10 companies and each of these companies sell the exact same product. Now normally the way these companies would compete with each other is based off two factors, quality or price, where you either aim for a higher quality or a lower price and that's what attracts customers to your business. But now where collusion enters the chat room is when these companies says, alright guys, so what I'm thinking is instead of us focusing on quality and price, let's instead just work together and pick up all of our prices. I just don't see why we need to focus on the actual product when we can just work together. They can't get it from anywhere else. They have to get it from us. I don't know about you, but I kind of see the same thing with and but that's just me. Now, why this works for them is because these are the only companies that sell this product or service. So essentially, you've been forced into buying this at super inflated prices for no reason at all. That's highly illegal. So basically, at the end of the day, all this does is makes these companies a whole lot more money and you and I get screwed in the process. It really makes you think how many other companies are doing this in South Africa in different sectors. But don't be alarmed because the Competitions Commission of South Africa was put in place to actually fight this exact form of collusion. So we're safe, right? Now, please remember, this doesn't only affect people that are traveling around the world exchanging their rands for other currencies. This affects everyone. It even affects small local businesses as well as companies that are doing millions of rands a month in business. This manipulation of the market from these banks is not fair at all. And what I really like is in Dan Corder's video on this exact same topic, he uses an example to show you how even big companies get affected by this. He used an example of a mining house in South Africa. Now, mining houses deal with huge amounts of money dealing with goods and services constantly across the board. Now, obviously, these mining companies would shop around across different banks to see who offers them the best rate of exchange in their currencies. But this is another place where all of these banks actually colluded, even with specific clients. It's almost like these guys went to each other and said, hey, these mining companies are a big deal. Let's not fight for them. Instead, let's work with each other, pass them around, and we'll manipulate the prices so that we can each get a piece of the pie. So practically, when like a mining house needs a specific bank, they will agree which bank 
bank is going to get the clients all the other banks will give them like worse rates or higher commission fees and the one bank that they chose can get the client for that time will give them the best offer and therefore that company or that mining company is forced into going for this bank because they are now getting the best rates even though it's inflated in prices so now these guys are now forced into working with this bank even though the commissions and the rates are higher and once again this just adds to the illegalness of this whole thing the saddest part when they're doing this with these big companies is that the smallest difference in fees can have a huge effect on the profitability of the business in that transaction or in their overall profitability in the year in fact a one cent difference in inflated bank currency trade could add millions of dollars of cost to that company every year so now if that gets lost in fees that essentially means that this company has less money to use in other sectors of the company even towards wages or even to just making the economy better and that's exactly why this is a big deal because it affects the entire economy businesses are paying more for foreign exchange which means this is affecting the price of imports and exports and the bank statements of the business mining companies have more costs causing the end product like fuel or electricity to act also increase in price and so much more now the question that arises is were these banks making a trillion rand a day doing this whole collusion scheme the short answer is no they weren't because according to financial analysts the entire world makes about five to eighty trillion dollars a year now if we are saying these companies were making a trillion rand a day that's 365 trillion rand a year or about 45 trillion dollars so that's saying that these 28 companies were making about half of the annual wage of the entire world which is not true because it's south africa they reuse the rand and the rand is a relatively weak currency so i doubt they're going to be making that kind of money from our small country but that being said they were still making millions of dollars every single year from doing this another sad thing to remember is that while they were making these millions of dollars every single year from collusion at the same time they were still repossessing houses repossessing cars and hiking up interest rate causing more people to get into debt that's kind of sad i think another big question that needs to be addressed somehow is are these banks colluding in other ways are they causing savings account rates to come lower are they causing interest rates to go higher simply just to get themselves more money we got to find that out and another question is are other companies colluding in south africa to affect those kind of sectors whether it's food or wi-fi or anything else really and now what i think we need to also speak about is what is a possible solution to this or a prevention method to avoid this from ever happening again in short i think the answer is crypto cryptocurrency. The reason for this is because cryptocurrency is built on a decentralized blockchain technology, which simply means that there is no governing authority in charge of the entire system. Transactions are recorded on a public ledger and the entire process is transparent. What this does for us is that it eliminates the need for third party systems like banks to be involved as you don't need them anymore. And when there's no banks, it means that there's no space for them to possibly collude on this entire process. Now, if businesses or individuals had to shift towards cryptocurrency for any form of international trade, this could disrupt the entire world economy, but in a good way. Well, good way for some that is. You need to remember that crypto does not rely on banks or people setting certain exchange rates. Instead, it works purely of market supply and demand. As good as it sounds, there are a few challenges that come along with cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrencies, which sounds really promising, are relatively new and are faced with issues like volatility and regulatory uncertainties. In summary, while cryptocurrency isn't really a silver bullet, I think it represents a shift towards a more decentralized and transparent financial system, which is essentially needed in this world because it would prevent the current collusion happening in the banking systems around the world. Now, I want you guys to let me know what you think of this entire situation. What are your thoughts on it? What penalties do you think these banks should undergo? Overall, what is your opinion on the whole situation? So if you found value, please subscribe. And once again, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to know how I made 100,000 Rand in a single week, watch this video. Or if you want to know how to sell on Take a Lot so you can do the same, watch this video. Stay blessed.